Hello students, let's do data handling exercise 24A, page number 261. Question 1, consider the following numbers. So you can see some numbers are given to us here and they have been randomly arranged. They are not in any particular order. So when numbers are collected like this, this is called the raw data. Now the first question here says arrange these numbers in ascending order. So let's do the first question first. So the question is arrange it in ascending order. So we're going to arrange these numbers now in ascending order. Ascending means from small to big. So we need to look out for the smallest number. So here we have in 60s, 70s, again 60s. Let's see if there's anything less than 60. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now less than 60 here, there is 52. Is there anything less than 52? No. So we write 52. So let's write that. So I'll cancel this 52 here. So we know that's written 52. So that's the only number in 50s. Now let's look at the 60s. Here we have 68, 63. Anything less than 63? Let's see. We have one more 63. That's it. So we are going to write both these 63s. So this 63 and this 63. So we have 63 and 63 now let's look for a number again in 60 so we finished with 63 what is just above 63 we have 68 we don't have anything else in 60s so let's write down 68 so we have 68 now let's move on to the 70s here we have 76 75 here we have 70 yes so 70 will be the smallest isn't it so let's write 70 so we have 70 do we have one more 70? Now let's look and see if we have one more 70. We don't have. Now we have 71. So this will come after 70. So let's write that. We're going to write 71. Okay. Then do we have something equal to 71? Do we have another 71? No, we have 73. So let's continue and see. We have 73, which we will write next. So 73. Then, again in 70s, we have 76, 75, anything smaller than 75. Let's go ahead and see. We have one more 75. So, let's write the 75s. So, here we have 1 and here we have 1. So, that is 75 twice. Then, what do we have? Again in 70s, we have 76. So, let's write down 76. And how many times is 76 written? Let's see. So, here we have 76. Only once, now we have 77. So let's write 77. Now let's go to the 80s. So leave out the numbers that have been struck off. Let's look at the other numbers. Here we have 83. Here we have 82. Do we have anything else? That's it. So we have 82 and then 83. So let's write that. 82, 83. Okay. So now let's see what the other numbers are. The other numbers are 90s in 90s. Now let's see we have a 90 here. Then we have 92 and we have 93. 90, 92 and 93. So let's cancel that 90, 92, 93. 92 and 93. What is left? What is left is 115, 105 and 103. Now let's see what are all the numbers left behind 115. 105, 103 and we have a 99 here. So let's write this 99 before we write the hundreds. So 99. Then let's look at these three numbers. 115, 105 and 103. Let's write 103 first and then we'll write 105 and then we will write the last number 115. So we have arranged all these numbers in ascending order. So now that the raw data has been arranged in ascending order, this is called an array. Ascending order, the data is called array. You arrange it in ascending order or descending order, then the data is called an array. Now the next question is, what is the range of these numbers? So we need to write the range of these numbers. How do we find that? You take the largest number, subtract the smallest number from it. So which is the largest number? 115. And the smallest number is 52. So we have to subtract these two numbers. So the largest number, you just have to look at your ascending order, the last number and the first number. So let's subtract 115 minus 52. 
So let's subtract and see. 5 minus 2 is 3. And then we have 11 here. 11 minus 5 is 6. So what do we have? We have 63. So the range of these numbers is 63. So when you're asked to find the range, look for the largest number and the smallest number and subtract the two numbers. Question 2. Represent the following data in the form of a frequency distribution table. So here we've been given data. We have numbers here. Now we have to draw a frequency distribution table. That is, when you arrange these numbers in a systematic form, you get a table. And that is called the frequency distribution table. So let's begin that. So we're going to draw the frequency distribution table. Now this table should always have three columns. So here we have three columns, one, two, and three. The first column will be what is given to us, the data that is given to us. Here the data are, the data is numbers. So the first column will be numbers. Second one and the third column will have the same titles for all frequency distribution tables. So the second column should be titled as tally marks and the third table should be titled as frequency. So this is a frequency distribution table. Now how do we do this? So the first thing we need to do is arrange these raw data that's given to us in the ascending order. So just like we did in the previous question, Look for the smallest number and arrange from small to big. So let's see, 16. Now these are all bigger. Let's see if we have anything less than 16. Do we have a 15? Yes, we have 15. Let's see if we have 14. We have 15s here. Now 15. Okay, and we don't have anything else. That means 15 is the smallest number. So first thing is we arrange the number in ascending order 15. And then we saw 16. And then we saw 17. Now, let's see if there is 18. Yes, there is 18. So, let's write 18. Then, do we have 19? Yes, we have 19. Then, do we have a 20? Yes, we have 20 and 21. So, 20 and 21. Do we have a 22? Now, let's look and see. Go throughout your numbers. Look carefully. Now, we don't have a 20. Two. So what is the first thing that we did? The first thing that we did is we have arranged the given data in ascending order. We have only this many numbers. All these numbers that you see have been repeated many times. So now what we're going to see is we're going to see how many times 15 has been repeated here. So let's see here. Let's start with the first row. Now we have 15 here. So 115 here. So for that 115, I'm going to put one stroke in the tally marks. Now, this is called a tally mark. So, I'm going to put one stroke. Now, there is one more 15. I'm not going to write two. Instead, I'm going to put one more stroke. Now, let's see again. We have one more 15. So, that is one more stroke. Again, 15. One more stroke. Four strokes. Now, let's see again. Now, here we have 15 again. Now, the fifth one is not a stroke just like the others. Instead, we draw one stroke that will go across all. So it's like forming a bundle. So this is a bundle of five tally marks. So the 15, there's one more 15. So instead of putting a stroke by the side, I have drawn one line across. So this tells me there are five 15s there. Okay, now let's see if there are any more 15s. Now we don't have any more 15s. Now let's go to the next number 16. Let's see how many times we have 16. So here let's start with this. So here we have one. 1, then let's continue, 2, 3, then we have 4. So in the first row we have 4, so let's draw 4 tally marks. So 1, 2, 3, 4. Now let's look at the second row, 5. So remember when you have 5, you draw a bundle, that's 5. Then we have 6, now start the next bundle, 1, 2. So we have 1 more. So how many do we have here? 5 plus 2. Remember, this is one bundle of 5. So 5 plus 2 is 7. Okay, now frequency is how many times the tally marks have come? How many tally marks do you have? So here we have 5. So the frequency is 5. That means 15 has come 5 times. Now 16 has come how many times? 5 plus 2. Can you see now it's easy to count? 5 plus 2. So 5 plus 2 is 7. Now let's look at 
17. So 17s are there. Let's count all the 17s in the first row. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, let's make a bundle of 5 first. So 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. So that is 5. Let's continue. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. One more bundle. So that is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then continue and see there's one more. So that is one extra. Now count and see. 5 plus 5 is 10. 10 plus 1 is 11. Now can you see how it's easy to uh, count when you put tally marks and the bundles? So this is 11. Now let's go to the next one that is 18 and count and see. So in the first row we have 118, 2, 3, Okay, so let's write the three tally marks. One, two, three. Now let's go to the second row. Four and five. So we have four and five. So can you see we've done that? That's it. We don't have any more. So what is the frequency? The frequency is five. Now let's go to the next number. That is 19. So we have 19. Let's see. Okay, so the first row we have one, two, three. Four. So let's write that down. One, two, three, four. Next second row we have five. One more. So that makes it five a bundle. Then one more. So put it next to it. So that's it. We don't have any more. Nineteen. So five plus one is six. We have six nineteens. Then we are going to go on to the next number. Twenty. Let's see how many twenties are there. One, two. Now in the first row we have only two. In the second row we have one more. So that is three. That's it. We don't have any more. So one, two, three. So what is the frequency of twenties? Twenties has occurred three times. Now let's go to 21. 21 is there in the first row. Let's begin. So 21. One. Go carefully. Don't miss out anything. Two. Go carefully again in the first row. Only two. In the second row, one more. So three. So one, two, three. That's it. Have you crossed out everything? You need to check that once more and see. So we have three, 21. So the frequency is three. So this is how we do a frequency distribution table. We write down all the numbers in ascending order. Then we put the tally marks by counting how many times each number has occurred in that list of data. Then count the tally marks and that is your frequency. Now there is one more final step where we write the total. So we're going to write the total here. That means we are going to add up these numbers in the frequency. That will tell us how many numbers are there totally. You don't have to count there because here we've already counted the tally marks and put it here. So if you count this, you will know the total number of numbers that have been given. So let's add this up and see. So let's begin. 5 plus 7 is 12 plus 1, 13. 13 plus 5 is 18. 18 plus 6 is 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30. So here we'll put a 0 and carry 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. So what is our total? Our total is 40. That means there are 40 numbers here. So this is our frequency distribution table. I hope you have understood. Let's go to the next question. Question 3. A die was thrown 20 times. Now, what is a die? A die is this. Now, many of you must have used this while playing games, isn't it? So, this is called a die. Now, this die was thrown 20 times and the following scores were recorded. So, each time this was thrown, one score would come. So, the first time it was 2, then the second time it was 1 and so on. It was thrown 20 times. So, these are the scores. Now, what are we asked to prepare? A frequency table for the scores. So let's prepare that. Now remember when you're making a frequency distribution table, you must have three columns. So we have the three columns, the second column and the third column. The titles will remain the same. The first column will depend on your question. So in this case, you can write scores or you can even write numbers itself. Okay, so the first thing we do is arrange these numbers in ascending order. So let's look for the smallest number. I can see 1. Do we have 0? We don't have 0. So 1 is the smallest number here. So we start in ascending order 1. Then there is 2. Then we have 3. 
Look at the table and look at the data and find out what are the numbers. Do we have 4? Yes. 5? Yes. 6? Yes. 7? No, we don't have 7. So let's look carefully and see. We don't have 7. So this is the first thing we did. We arranged the data in ascending order. Now we're going to write tally marks. That means we're going to put strokes to tell us how many times these numbers have occurred in this list. So let's look at 1 and see how many times 1 has come. So that is 1. Then we have 2, 3, 4. 4 times. So 4 strokes. So 1, 2, 3 and 4. So the frequency is 4. That means 1 has occurred 4 times. Then the next number is 2. Let's see how many times 2 has occurred there in that list. So let's find out. So here it is 1, then 2, continue, 3, 4. That's it. So 4 strokes, 1, 2, 3, 4. So the frequency is 4. Now let's go to the next number which is 3 and see how many times 3 has occurred there. So let's start 1. Go carefully so you don't miss out. 2 and 3. That's it. So 1, 2 and 3. So the frequency is 3. Now let's go to the next number 4. 1, 2, 3. Now 3 strokes. 1, 2, 3. So 3 tally marks there and the frequency is 3. Next is 5. 1, 2, 3. 5 is also 3. 3 strokes. 1, 2, 3. So the frequency is 3. Next is 6. 1, 2, 3. That's it. 6 is also 3. 1, 2, 3. So the frequency is 3. So now what do we have in the last step? We have to find the total frequency. So let's add up and see. 4 plus 4 is 8. 9, 10, 11. 11 plus 3 is 14. 14 plus 3 is 17 and 17 plus 3 is 20. So the total here is 20. That means there are 20 scores and the question says that, isn't it? A die was thrown 20 times. So we have got the correct answer here. So you need to check this so that we know that we have written the correct number of times. We've not missed out anything. We will stop with this for now children. In our next video, we will continue with the remaining questions. Thank you children.